Welcome to Mars Horizon, folks. This is a game that I have really, really been looking forward to. I love everything space, and I just can't wait to get into this game. I played a little bit on my own just to try it out, get a little feel for how it works. So let's jump into a new game. We are going to not play as the ESA. We are going to set up our own uh, space agency. We can customize it here, but we have five different uh, space agencies that we can choose from uh, by default. We have the ESA, we have NASA, we have the Soviet Union slash Russia, uh, we have China, and we have Japan. And they all have different agency bonuses. So for instance, Japan here uh, has uh, Three bonuses, achieving a top three milestone rank grant science bonus of up to 25%, plus 25% funds reward for lucrative type re request missions. All science related building adjacency bonuses are doubled. Now, we are going to choose the ESA, but we're going to customize it. We want the other space agencies in there, uh, and then we're going to customize the ESA here. So we're not going to have these bonuses. So let's go ahead and customize. We can choose another flag, which we're going to do because we're not the ESA. We are going to choose... I think I like this flag. Yeah. Maybe. Hmm. I think I like this one better because it has more planets on it. <laughs> Uh, basically, um, hmm, there's also this one. I like that one. Let's choose that one. And we are going to be United Space Nerds. That is going to be our agency name. And our headquarters is not going to be Europe's spaceport. It's going to be Ner Nerdy HQ. Uh, for our traits, we can remove and add traits as we like we have a certain amount of points we have four points that we can use and there are both positive and negative traits so for instance here we have backup systems can restart a task once per mission bidding war three additional contracts are available commercial insight plus 25 percent funds reward for lucrative type request missions etc these are all positive and then there are some negative like failure not an option double support penalty for failed missions uh, not because it's easy, milestone support bonus is only granted for first place finishes, stuff like that. We are going to focus on money. We are going to focus all our traits on money. So we won't have any science bonuses directly, but we'll have a lot of money to start off with and everything will be a little bit cheaper. So we're going to select the space subsidy, we'll start the game with 2000 extra funds. And then we are going to go up here and we're going to choose economical construction minus 20% vehicle build cost. We are going to go with economical assembly minus 20% payload build cost. And we're going to go with economical architecture minus 25% building construction cost and upkeep. And that's exactly four points. So we don't need to select a negative trait. So let's go ahead and choose this confirm and this is fine as it is uh, the us is friendly russia soviet union are indifferent and so are china and japan so let's continue we are going to play on the pioneer difficulty which is kind of the default difficulty uh, a balanced experience, missions will provide a challenge, and other space agencies will be competitive. So that's how we're going to do that. We are got, not going to auto-resolve any uh, missions, so we can auto-resolve request missions. These are missions that are not milestone missions, they're not missions that we have to complete. But uh, I think let's just uh, not auto resolve because that gives us a chance to get some bonuses out of those missions. I'm not sure that the auto resolve can possibly get the higher level of achievement. I think it just completes it automatically at the level expected, not the bonus level. And we're going to turn the tutorial off 
and let's start the game. Welcome, Director. You are trusted with guiding our agency through this dawning space age and far beyond. Make use of our, our diplomatic expertise to promote international cooperation and scientific innovation and place our agency at the forefront of humanity's voyage into space. Only by working together can we realize feats long thought impossible. With your leadership, we will uncover the mysteries of the solar system and perhaps one day make humans a multiplanetary species. Bonjance, Director. Okay, Bonjons is of course because we are effectively the ESA and French, right? So, all right, so here we have Earth and we need to do research. We need to build up our base. Uh, let's take a look at our base. So here we have two buildings now. We have the HQ, which gives us 10 science per month. And we have the vehicle hangar, which gives us 10 science per month. Now we can't build anything else right now, but there are tons of buildings that we need to build. Uh, up here we have our funds. We have uh, two million, which is because we ch chose this uh, trait. We earn fifty thousand a month. We ha are making one hundred and twelve science a month. We have fifty support, and we are at tier one. So if we earn more support, then we go up in tiers, which means our funding increases. So we'll have more uh, income. Now the buildings, of course cost upkeep so we need to get our support up so that we can have more buildings so we can build more rockets etc etc let's take a look at research so the first thing we have is a test launch which is already researched and we're going to set that mis mission up pretty soon then we have buildings we have the small launch pad which we are going to need so this is the first thing that we are going to research and then we have vehicles and you can see here we have a whole host of vehicles that we need to research we have a whole host of buildings that we need to research and we have a whole host of missions that we need to research a lot of missions and it's so cool and of course the ultimate goal is to colonize mars basically Hence the name Mars Horizon. So for each era, when we do all the research in an era, we get a, a era completion reward. So space systems expertise for this era, we get 5% payload reliability, but we need to research 10 uh, items or 10 topics in this era to unlock that. And the same goes for buildings. We also have era and for vehicles. But let's start the research of the small launch pad. So we're now researching that. And then we need to head into Earth here and take a look at missions. So over here we have milestones, uh, which we are racing against the other space agencies to com complete first. So the test launch, we can see everyone is has the research for the test launch for the artificial satellite no one has it etc obviously because we just started the game but some agencies will go for the artificial satellite first or sorry for the animal in space first for instance and others will go for satellite imaging first and it's impossible to win every single race we kind of need to f decide where our focus is going to be and my focus is going to be first uh, to get human in space. That is my focus. We are beelining for human in space. And on the way, we are going to need to do animal in space and we're going to need to do artificial satellite. So we're going to do test launch, artificial satellite, animal in space, human in space. We are going to skip satellite imaging for now. We're not going to focus on that. We're going directly for human in space now over here we have request missions there are none yet but there will be request missions coming up where uh, some commercial entity or the government or whatever wants us to send up a mission and that will give us some rewards and the request missions though not milestones are very important because they really boost can boost your both your money and your uh, science 
So let's plan the test launch here. And we are, uh, let's just go back here. So here we need to design a new vehicle. We can see the, uh, uh, the steps here. So we have the overview, then we have vehicle. We need to design that. And then there's launch preparation. So let's design the vehicle. And we are just gonna build a sounding rocket. We don't need to do anything. Uh, we can start building it. But we can't launch it right now because we don't have the small launch pad, which we are currently researching. So let's confirm this. That'll cost us 64,000 and the expected reliability is 25%. Not great. So let's build the vehicle and continue on to the next month. Now, if you are enjoying Mars Horizon, if you're enjoying the video, I would really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button the, and the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. It really helps out the channel a lot. And I, you have no idea how much I appreciate it uh, when you hit that like button and subscribe. And I can see from statistics that 85% of my views come from people who are not subscribed to the channel. So if you are enjoying the videos, I would really love it if you'd hit that subscribe button. Okay, so we have our research complete for the small launch pad here. So next we need to start researching something else. And what we're going to start searching is these two uh, boosters, uh, the, uh, or the booster Emerald and the upper stage Topaz. So let's start by, with Emerald here and we need to build our small launch pad so that will cost us 37,000 and we can see that there are there are these small uh, pluses and a, a small minus and that is the effects of placing the launch pad there so in the bottom right corner you can see that uh, if we place the launch pad here we'll get a minus two vehicle build time but we'll also get a minus one payload reliability so we don't want that minus so we're going to build it up here i think because here we just have the minus two uh, vehicle build time so we don't want it next to this building and it's because of that building that the negative is there so let's build the small launch pad down here at the end and continue on to the next month Small launch pad is complete. Launch pads are an essential service structure for launch vehicles, allowing maintenance work and providing data about the vehicle ahead of launch. Allows the launch of small vehicles. Okay. And funny enough, we have just completed the test launch vehicle, which is great. And it's actually giving us a plus five launch reliability. Wonderful. So now we need to select launch date so this is the launch preparations this is uncrewed so we can't select a uh, astronaut we can't do any training because we don't have any uh, uh, training facilities yet and but the training can be either we get extra science rewards or the payload gets more reliable the launch vehicle gets more reliable stuff like that uh, now let's select a launch date now here we can see it's suggesting april it's just suggesting the first month month really or the next month and that is fine because we have an optimal launch date here so no launch reliability penalty we have optimal and we have suboptimal launch dates so if we selected august then it would be a suboptimal launch date and we'll we get a 20 percent launch reliability penalty ouch now let's just go with april first month available and hopefully have a successful launch so that we beat the others and get that test launch going without a hitch and hit that milestone first so confirm mission setup we'll be launching in one month next month Emerald research complete. A small early liquid fuel rocket based on earlier sounding rocket designs. Okay. 
reached era one, dawn of space flight. As rocket technology advances, so does the prospect of exploring beyond the confines of our planet. Yet the public continue to question whether the fledgling agencies can overcome the dangers of space flight. Unlock the moon. Cool. All right. Test launch, ready for launch. We are first by a mile. They haven't even begun planning their uh, missions yet. So we are first by a mile, provided we actually get into space. We have 30% launch uh, reliability, not great. Let's see what's the what's what blah, blah, what the weather is like. And it's looking like it's fine. Uh, and the rocket name is Valorous. April 1957, we are launching our first sounding rocket. This is so exciting! And good conditions, outstanding, plus 9% uh, reliability. So we have a 15% chance of critical failure. Basically, that means boom. We blow up. We have a 40 six percent chance of getting a negative effect which could be that we get reduced uh, rewards in this case because when we get to ne the next missions we'll be doing some exercises in space uh, some tasks in space but for the sounding rocket here we're not doing that so basically the negative effect will be a reduced uh, reward. We have 29% chance of everything going according to plan. It's fine, no penalties, no nothing. And then we have a 10% chance of a positive event, which means that we get extra rewards for the mission. So let's let's launch. Ooh. Go baby, go. Go, baby, go. Don't blow up. 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 Come on, baby. Yeah! Woo! All right! We are in space. We made it. And we have a negative effect. So minus 20% uh, science mission reward, which sucks, but it's acceptable. Our sounding rocket gets a little bit more reliable. Well, quite a lot more reliable, actually, 15%, which is great. And we are number one, which gives us 25 extra support. So that is just fine. And we get 187 science for one month. So continue. And we are now the first to complete the test launch. Outstanding. Um, all right. So up here, we can now see that we have 175 support. So we are actually up to tier two, but it doesn't take effect until we have the funding review down here in uh, nine months. So we want to get our support up as high as possible before this funding review. Now, we unlocked the moon because we researched emeralds. So let's take a look here. We have some missions here. We have lunar orbit. We need to achieve that. And we have a crewed moon landing, which is the next big thing that we are aiming for. We want to be first to the moon. Now, there are no request missions here. And let's take a look at Earth and see what we have. Are there any request missions? No. All right. We need to do some more research. We'll research uh, Topaz and get that done. And if we take a look, Topaz costs 150 to research. We are actually producing 303 science per month right now because of the mission. So that is just fine. Cool. We'll have some science to spare. Let's move on to the next month. Topaz research complete. A small solid fuel upper stage capable of lifting only basic satellites into low Earth orbit. Okay. Now, okay, so NASA is... Japan is launching in three months, the test launch. China in four, Soviet Union in eight, and NASA in three as well. Okay. 
Well, good luck, guys. All right, so missions. We need to research the artificial satellite next so that we can get the next milestone mission uh, completed here, the artificial satellite. And now we have a test launch, guidance system test. Let's plan that mission. And we will build the sounding rocket. It's just a sounding rocket as well. Fantastic. And we are... Paying sixty-four thousand for that. Let's just go and see what were the rewards for uh, for this. Hundred support and two hundred and fifty science. That's fine. I like the science and I like the support. So let's build that science rocket or a sounding rocket. Build vehicle and go to the solar system. That'll take two months. Let's head on to the next month. Artificial satellite research is complete, an essential first step in any space program. The first agency to launch a satellite into a stable orbit around Earth will take a prominent early lead in the space race. That's going to be us. All right. Uh, we need to research the payload as well. So we've researched the mission mission now, but we haven't. We don't have the ability to build the payload for the mission. So let's research the payload for the mission as well and continue on next month. Uh, all right, our vehicle is complete. It's called Emperor, cool name. And it has a 40% launch reliability because we didn't get the plus five uh, bonus uh, that we did on the, sound, the test launch. So let's select a launch date. And oh, we're going to have to wait until November I'm not going in a suboptimal win launch window and only have 20% launch reliability. That's not happening. So we're going in November. That kind of sucks. But it's okay. Next month. Nothing happened. Next month. Ezro 2B is completed. A small cylindrical satellite carrying basic X-ray and cosmic ray detectors. Okay. Let's do some more research. We need... A building we are going to build research the research lab that'll give us uh, an extra 100 science per month i think it is maybe i am not entirely sure it doesn't say but it does definitely boost our uh, science output probably not by 100 maybe by 50 i think all right next month Still nothing going on. Now, we only have the ability to have one mission going at a time. So we can't actually uh, start planning the artificial uh, satellite here because we have no mission slots available. We can get more mission slots by researching some buildings. Now, all right, next month. Research lab, research complete. Nice. And the test launch guidance system test is ready for launch. Cool, let's launch the mission. Let's launch the mission. Okay. Weather is looking nice. That is good. Launch date, Emperor, November 1957. Okay. So, adequate conditions, plus 1%. So we have a 15% chance of going boom. We'll take it. Go, 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 Emperor. Get up there. Get up there, Emperor. Clear the tower. Come on. Come on, Emperor. Go, go, go. You can do it. I believe in you. I believe in you. Yeah. We did it. We did it. All right, and uh, it was a good launch. No mission effects, nice. So our sounding rocket gets even more reliable, up to 55% now. And we get our 100 support and 250 science for a month. Nice. Now, base, we need to build our uh, research lab. Oh, it unlocks mission training. Okay, so it unlocks that we can uh, do science training for the mission, which gives us 
uh, more science rewards for each mission. But it has an upkeep of 4,000 per month. Now, here we can rotate the buildings and we could place it like that uh, to make it nice and symmetrical. But I am going to place it like this uh, so that we can get something next to this building again on this side. And over here, it's actually a negative, so we don't want that. And you can see here, if I move the building around, there are different prices for where you build the building because there are obstacles in the way. Some of them are cheap to remove, some of them are really expensive to remove. So over here, you can see it costs me 1,725,000 to build this. We're not doing that. Uh, but over here, it costs 100 grand. We could also build it here, 100 grand. I think I'm going to build it here, actually. Yeah, let's build it there. We did need to clear a little bit of stuff, but we have the money for it right now, so uh, that's fine. Let's set some research. Now... Hmm... The research lab expansion... Ah, here we go. The research lab expansion gives us 50 science per month, which is nice, but not essential right now. We just need to get ready to launch our astronaut into space. And for that, we need to get up to the medium launch pad here because we need the medium launch pad to do that. We also need the astronaut training facility to do that. But we also need some more rockets. And I think that's what I'm going to research now. I think we're going to research the Jupiter. So. If we take a look at the rockets here, so we have the Algol, which requires a small launch pad. It has a capacity of 1,000 kilos. The launch reliability is 65%. The reliability goes up 5% per level it reaches, up to level 5, so it can get up to 90% reliability. Uh, the build time is two months, and the build cost is 64,000. Now, the Jupiter, has a capacity of 1200 kilos its launch reliability is higher 75 percent but it only goes up uh, by one percent per month or per level and the build time is three months so it takes longer to build and it's quite a lot more expensive than the algal um, now, here we have our upper stages. These two are boosters, then we have ups, upper stages over here. And the upper stage, the Able here weighs 1,000 kilos, the Jupiter weighs 1,200 kilos, and the Scout weighs 1,000 kilos. The Scout is only has a 40% launch reliability. Jupiter 65 and Able 75. But Able can only carry 350 kilos. Jupiter can carry 500 kilos. I think we're going to select the Jupiter booster and do that. And probably... Hmm. Hmm. Do we want to do the alcohol and Able instead? I'm kind of thinking that we do... Let's do the Algol instead and Able, because they are cheaper. Well, actually, Able is more expensive than Jupiter for the upper stage, but for the lower stage, it's the other way around. Algol is basically half price, but it can't carry uh, the Jupiter upper stage. You know We're going with the Jupiter changed my mind. We're going with the Jupiter for the extra carrying capacity. Alright. Uh, let's see. Artificial satellite. We can start doing this mission now. Ooh, and they are already ready to do this. They're launching in seven months and they're launching in ten months. That's not good. Uh, we need to select a payload. The build time is two months. And we have four uh, starting power. This is, uh, we'll get more into this when we, when we actually get a mission where we need to do something uh, in space. 
which is this one. So we'll select this payload, the standard one, and that'll take two months. Okay, Jupiter research is complete. Then we'll do Jupiter over here as well. All right, but we review and we get up to tier two. We're making 75,000 per month now. Tier three, we get 100,000, but we are 125 support shy of that. All right, the other Jupiter is complete and our artificial satellite payload is complete. So we got no effects there. The reliability is 65%. Let's design the vehicle for this. Now we need to use, we just need the topaz here. We just need the smallest uh, one that we have. We can see over here, we have uh, the payload is 40 kilos. The upper stage on the topaz here can carry 40 kilos, so that's perfect. It can go into Earth orbit, yes. We haven't selected a booster yet. Now, if we selected uh, the Jupiter, it can carry 500 kilos, but we really don't need that. And it also takes three months to build. This only takes one month. So we will select the Topaz and we may still be in the race. Now, and the Emerald here, can carry 400 kilos. It lives up to all the needs. It requires the small launch pad, so that's what we're going to use. If we take a look at the Jupiter, it can carry a, mu a lot more, uh, but we don't need that, and it takes longer to build. So we'll be able to complete this in three months and for 78,000 instead of four months for 141,000. So we'll select that part and confirm and we'll build the vehicle. Cool, cool. It'll take three months. If we take a look at it here, so the US is launching in five. We just might be able to at least match the US. We may even be able to tip them to the title, which would be nice. All right. So we have those two now. Let's research animal in space. Research lab complete. We can now do training for science. Very nice. Continue on. So China is launching the artificial satellite in six months. Uh, so in Union in 10 and NASA in three. We came first in test launch. We want to have that number one up here as well. We really, really do. We have lots and lots of money, not so much science, but that's okay. That's okay. All right, we completed our vehicle. Let's do some, ooh, plus 5% payload reliability, nice. Uh, so let's do our launch preparations. So now we can do the science reward here. So base science reward is now 400. Training bonus per month plus 5%. Max training bonus 25%. We'll select that. And we'll select a launch date. We are not going in the suboptimal window. So we're going to go in June. You can see here plus 5% if we science if we go in May. Plus 10% science if we go in June. And June is optimal. And we are at least matching the US. So that's what we're doing. And if we launch in the same month as one of our competitor agencies, then we win, then we get the first place. So we'll select June, confirm mission and go to the solar system. Very nice, next month. NASA is launching artificial satellite next month. So are we. Uh, let's have a look at our research. How are we doing? Oh, almost. We're missing two. <laughs> two science we're missing. And then there's the Eden payload here, which costs 750 to research. Okay, next month. Animal in space research complete. Very nice. And we are... Hmm... We're ready to go. We are ready to go. We have 
70% payload reliability, 63% launch slot reliability, and we'll be getting 440 science for this. Very nice. Ooh, it's raining. Damn it. <sighs> We're still going, because we want to match the US. June 1958. Intrepid is going into space, hopefully. Uh, terrible conditions, minus 20%. But it's only a 14% chance to blow up. So we're going. Don't blow up. Please 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 don't blow up. Don't blow up. Don't blow up. We have lift off. Go, 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 little satellite. Go, 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 don't blow up, don't blow up, don't blow up. Ah, beautiful. We got up there. All right, and we actually got a neutral launch, secure launch. Nice. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, and our Emerald and Topaz got a little bit of experience. They get a little bit more reliable. So... Here we have our first tasks in space. Now, we have comms and we have data that we need to collect. And we need to collect two of each. So let's continue. And here we have some tasks that we need to do in space. Now, if we meet our objective of two and two, we, we win. But if we get three and three, then we get a 50% bonus reward, which is awesome. And we want that bonus reward, right? I'm sorry about that. Tring, tring, tring. I forgot to turn off uh, not notifications from uh, YouTube. That basically meant that I just got a new subscriber. Congratulations, me. All right, so what are we gonna do here? We have power as a resource, and we're going to have to use some power to do our first task because we don't have any of these that we can also use as resources in our uh, in our tasks here so we have an input and we have an output i think we're going to start by doing a signal return test that gives us a comms which we can then use for our second task if we so choose and we do we are going to do some atmospheric sampling here and get three of the data. And that's the two commands that we have in this turn. We have four turns to get up to three and three, uh, and we have two commands each turn. So let's confirm those commands and see what happens. Good. No failure here. So we're going to accept that. We get our one comms, and then... The next one is successful as well, so we get our three uh, data. We'll accept that. Now, had one of these failed, we could use power to resist it, to fix it, uh, basically. Uh, so we could use one extra power, and that would make the, uh, the task go through anyway. If we do fail, then there is some effect. It could be for, for this task, for instance, where we get three data, we might only get two, or it would cost an extra uh, comms to do or something like that. So there can be different uh, kinds of failure, you might say. Now, next, we need to get some comms. So, why don't we... Hmm. Why don't we do this? And then we'll actually recharge once, recharge our power, so that we get some more power to work with. So, let's see. Alright, this is successful. It's very successful. Bonus! Uh, so, we this command will generate an additional one comm. So, we got four comms instead of the three that we were expecting, which is wonderful. That basically means that we can complete this on this turn, because we can just use a comms to get a data, and that gives us three and three. 
And then we can use the other one to recharge power again. We don't need to do anything else. Let's do it. And here we have a failure. So now we can see a malfunction in the camera has resulted in reduced data generation. This command's output will re be reduced by one data unless you spend one power to resist the event. So if we don't resist, if we don't spend one power, then we won't be getting our data and we will not have completed our mission. If we do spend our power, which we can do thankfully because we were uh, saving up some power, then we can resist it and we do get our one data. So let's resist. And there we have it. We have completed the mission and there is jubilation in the control room. We're in mission control. Fantastic. And we did it first. So we get some extra uh, support. And because we got the bonus, we also got extra science. So we get 330 science for two months. That's the total of 660 science we're getting there. Very nice. Continue. Uh, so what's the next thing that we are researching? We are researching the payload for Eden here. And... Let's continue on to next month. Fears over artificial satellite. Following your agency launching the first artificial satellite, several foreign newspapers have claimed the satellite represents a global security threat. China requested that your agency releases the full specifications of your uh, ESRO2B payload to prove its scientific purpose and quell public anxiety. Your advisors believe agreeing to the request will improve your reputation with China, though the latter will likely gain science from it. We're not going to share it. I don't care about China. Reject request. All right. Request rejected. We gained 100 support from that, but we lost some reputation with China. I don't care about China. I do care about support, though. Very nice. So, let's see. We... We completed it first, NASA completed it second, Japan completed its test launch in last place, and Soviet Union is now launching its artificial satellite in six months. Okay, let's continue on. Radiation belts discovered. Data from your recent artificial satellite mission has confirmed that belts have trapped radiation around Earth, shielding the planet from the sun's cosmic rays. Gained 200 science. Very nice. Very nice. Eden research complete. Small capsule able to carry animals into space to study the effects of spaceflight on living organisms. Okay. Let's do some more research. Now we do need to get to human in space, but there is a lot that we need before we can do human in space. So we're going to research the spacecraft assembly building because we need two of these to unlock this down here and we need mission control we need astronaut training we need medium launch pad in order to launch a human into space we also need the, the better uh, boosters and a better upper stage so we need to research one of these other upper stages as well in order to be able to launch a human into space so there's a while to go there's a while to go but we can now do animal in space so let's go ahead and plan a mission for an animal in space now we could do the standard we can also do a prototype which is reduced build cost uh, but it's also less reliable the payload at least then we have comms, we get uh, improved communications modules, which basically means that we get uh, an extra, or we need less, uh, so again, it reduces the payload reliability. So uh, this, I, be I believe it means that we get, uh, we, we don't need to generate as many uh, comms uh, units during our task in space. And then there's power increased power so you can see here uh, if we select the standard we get five power to start but if we select power then we get eight power to start it also makes the um, the capsule 
quite a bit more expensive, 289192, so basically 100 grand uh, more expensive. I don't think we need to do that. I think we'll just go with standard, select the payload, and build the payload. Okay. So, we are out of time, guys, but I hope you're enjoying uh, Mars Horizon. I think it's a wonderful game. And I can't wait to get more into it together with you guys. It's so much fun. And next time, we are launching a animal into space. Now, the animal we launch into space is not coming back. It's staying into space until it... Well, you know. And so, so we're not sending a dog or something. We're, 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 we're sending a less lovable animal of some sort. I don't know which yet. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, actually, I would love it if you would, in the comments, make some suggestions for which type of animal we should be sending into space uh, and what its name should be. That would be fantastic if you could leave a comment. Uh, what kind of animal is going into space and what is that animal's name that would be fantastic if you could uh, let me know in the comments down below uh, this video is up on wednesday the 18th the next video is going to be recorded either thursday or friday and it'll be going up friday so let me know as soon as possible what you want to send into space so thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, why not leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.